Praise the name of the Lord. I welcome everyone this morning. This is Abe Adeniba. I welcome you to this Shekinah online pulpit. And I pray that the word of today shall surely be a blessing and shall surely give you comfort. It shall encourage you in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray this morning for everyone who is in a kind of a pit of destiny or a pit of issues. I pray that the force of destiny shall bring you out into your God-ordained status. God bringing you to a new level of life as he has preordained for you in the name of Jesus. So I welcome you this morning all over the world and I'd like to also welcome the members of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry. We pray that today as the announcement will be made that we shall return into person uh, to person worship and um, I pray that the Lord will surely you know, erase this pandemic and we shall go back into fellowship in our various, you know, churches and um, assemblies. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we want to appreciate you this morning. We thank you for the moment of this fellowship. We ask, O oh Lord God, that your Holy Spirit dwells among us. And we pray for the hearers, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit be present with them, that they may understand the word of today. And I pray, mighty God, that this word shall bring deliverance unto one or people that are having a feeling of regret where they are in life, where they want to be in life. And I pray that as we seek your will, surely, Lord God, you will bring us by the force of the destiny which you have preordained for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I welcome you this morning. Are we going to continue on this new series? which is destiny upset. And this morning we're going to focus about the force of destiny. The force of destiny. What is a force of destiny? The force of destiny is the, the moment by which, you know, God predetermined, uh, God predetermined event has to come up, has to manifest. We're talking about the time that we shall be constraint in order that the will of God might come to manifestation. Sometimes we are constrained to be in line with the predetermined purpose of God. Hallelujah. And I want to assure you this morning that the Lord will surely bring his purpose to fulfillment in your life. But when that purpose is about to be fulfilled, there's always something that has to take place. There is always people that God will raise to effect the time of his preordination or predetermined perhaps for a new level of life perhaps for an assignment that he has preordained for you and so it is this morning that we're going to be looking at the the force of destiny you know destiny is predetermined will of god destiny is preordained assignment of god that you have been called for there is always a time that whatever god has planned for you will surely manifest the process might be different the experience might be different to other people hallelujah let's look at the word of the lord this morning jeremiah chapter 29 jeremiah chapter 29 the word of the lord says to jeremiah through Jeremiah the prophet, and said to him, concerning his people, in verse 10, Thus says the Lord, when the 70 years have been completed for Babylon, I will visit you and fulfill my good word towards you to bring you back to this place. It's the predestination of God, you know, to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope, to give you a future and a hope. And this morning, I don't know where you stand. I don't know how you are feeling right now, but God, the word of God says it will bring you into his plan to give you a future. The plan that he had for you to bring you to a future, a predestined future, a predestined purpose. And so you need to believe this morning that there will be a time that God will come by the force 
of his dest of the destiny he has for you to bring you into place of your ordination, to bring you into a place of your purpose. This is what the force of destiny is. I don't know where you have been reminded or reprimanded or dejected or rejected, but I'm praying this morning that the force of destiny which I preach this morning will bring you into perfect will of God in the name of Jesus. Therefore, a force is a compelling urge. The force is the move of God in a particular time. You know, there is the chronological time and there is the Kairos time. The Kairos time of God does not mean it's predetermined event. The Kairos time of God brings about the time that God is about to bring into effect that which he has planned. And so we saw that the force of destiny is what brings a man into his line of assignment. The force of destiny comes by a constraint that you will experience in life. You know, sometimes we, we see, we, we express that the constraint. There are things that you may wish to do. There are things that you have planned to do. But when the force of destiny is in place, you are constrained. You are constrained to go according to the will of God. Amen. And so we're saying this morning that this force of destiny is an experience that gives way to God's predetermined event or preordained season. Hallelujah preordained season. That's where the force comes. Is the Spirit of God. Is the move of the Spirit of God in the life of His children that He had a plan for them. He has a good, He has a future for them. He has, he has given them, you know, that, that her hope in Christ Jesus. And so, I do not know where you may be standing, but I know that through Christ Jesus, you will come into that will of God. You will come into that predetermined purpose of God through Christ Jesus. Let's look at our scripture, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 7. I'll take it from verse 7. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it says here, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight. Verse 9, he made known to us the mystery of his will, the mystery of his will according to his kind intention which he Propose in him, that is Christ, with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ. The summing up of all things in Christ. Whatever it is that you are hoping for, wherever that you think you are, where you want to be, everything is summed up in Christ. The will of God on this earth is summed up in Christ Jesus. And so is your destiny. Is summed up in Christ Jesus. You need to know him as to flow into his predetermined purpose for your life. Let's read on verse 10. Summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens, things on the earth, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things according after the counsel of his will. Hallelujah. He said, I'll take verse 11 again, also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will. To the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ will be to the praise 
of his glory. Hallelujah. We be to the praise of his glory. And so this is telling us that the God has predetermined us in Christ Jesus. Having been adopted in Christ Jesus, he's predetermined us. And all that he has predetermined us is fulfilled through Christ Jesus. And I want you to believe that it's not by mistake where you are. There is no regret where you are. You can only hope for the better. You can only hope for the greater places. But I want you to know that the predetermined purpose of God established through Christ Jesus has a time that it comes into perfection, has a time that is being released by the force of destiny. Therefore, the destiny is an instrument of God to bring about his predetermined event predetermined purpose in your life, predetermined career, predetermined marriage that he brings into your life. Hallelujah. It was the force of destiny when God said to Samuel, go into the house of Jesse. I have made a choice among his sons. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 to 16. You all know that story. Though David was forgotten in the bush, by the instrument of predetermined purpose, they had to remember him. And I'm praying that you will be remembered today. If you are standing outside of your purpose, outside of the will of God, you will be remembered today in the name of Jesus. So we saw this experience of the force of destiny at the right time that God has designed. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 to 16. Then in verse 16, Samuel said to Jesse, is that all of the young men? Is that all of the young men? You know, he has seen all. And God has showed him that, no, it's not by size. It's not by weight. It's not by color. The womb he has predestined or preordained for a certain assignment. It's not among these ones. And Samuel asked, is that all of the young men in the house? And Jesse replied, There is still the youngest one, but he's taking care of the flock. Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we cannot turn our attention to other things until he comes. Praise the name of the Lord, until he comes. You can see the compelling situation whereby the time of the Lord has come for David to be ordained for the next level. And I'm praying today that the force of destiny shall come into your life situation to bring you into the right purpose of God for your life in the name of Jesus. And so we see here in this verse, in, the, in this uh, story of, of Samuel going to the house of Jesse at a time that the Lord is about to do something new. You know, pre-ordination or predetermined will of God is in line with the agenda of God. And I pray that you will not be left out, out of the agenda of God. It's about the agenda of God. You may be predetermined to be the best scientist in the world. You may be predetermined to be the one that will bring a solution, a change in a community, in the whole world, or in a nation. It's an agenda of God. And by the force of destiny, God will raise you from wherever that you are, which is not according to his purpose. God will raise you and bring you in line to that season. That's why Romans 8 verse 28 says, you know, For God works all things for the good of them that love him. For the good of them who are called according to his purpose. So wherever that you may find yourself, I want you to believe that, you know, if it's not the place God predetermined for you, there is what is called the force of destiny that is coming for you. I say the force of destiny that is coming for you, wherever you are standing, and it's not the place that God wants for you. God, God, by the force of destiny, is coming for you. I don't know, sometimes, you know, people are living, you know, you may say that, oh, I've been single for all this long, relationship has not been working for me, or my relationship is an abusive relationship. I'm saying to you, by the force of destiny, God is going to take you out and place you where his will exists for your marriage, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So destiny is a force. It's a pool by the grace of God in times and season. 
Maybe you are in the wrong place, contrary to the will of God. I want you to pray for this force of destiny to take you and place you where God has ordained for you. The wrong places, God will take you into the right place. He said, I've got a plans for you, a plans for the future, and to give you hope. That is the word of the Lord. And that is the force of destiny that I'm sharing this morning. And I want you to pray for this force of destiny if you are not satisfied with life. I want you to pray for the force of destiny if you are not happy with where you are. There is the force of destiny that will bring into manifestation God's predestined purpose for your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So therefore, pray for this force of destiny before you even seek a prophecy. Pray for the destiny God has for you before you, you, you go about looking for, for prophecy. You know, David that we saw was at his workplace. David was at the place of his destiny, taking, looking after the uh, the bulls and the sheep and the goats. He was there. He was doing his own thing. But when the force of destiny arrives, no one could resist him. They had to remember him. The, the, the man of God had to ask, that is, there, is this all that you've got? Because it's a time for David to be moved from where he is. The force of destiny was in place, pulling him for his ordination for the next level in the name of Jesus. They had to remember him. And I pray that you shall be remembered that this force of destiny will bring you into remembrance of those who are to give you your promotion, who are to give you, you know, the next elevation in your industry, in your ministry, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The force of destiny. And I want to say to someone, you know, force of destiny also works in a way that, you know, you don't need to fight those who leave you. You don't need to fight them. If somebody has left you, you don't need to fight them. It may be the force of destiny, a predetermined plan of God that that person has to take, you know, has to take exit. I've seen so many people who left the company to build their own company, who left the church to start their own church, and today they are big. They are big church, they are small church. But what I'm saying is this, the force of destiny, you cannot stop it. You cannot stop it. It's the move of God, the move of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You know, people may have a compelling call to ministry. They have a compelling call to ministry. If, you know, if no one is, is, is asking them or telling them it's time you answer the call of God, but when the force of destiny comes, oh, it can be as if it's a crisis, but it's not a crisis. It's the force of destiny to bring about God's preordained call upon a man or a woman in the name of Jesus. So also I've seen people, you know, they left the cradle of their career to call in the ministry. We see that they remain in a place unnoticed, not impactful, and they have erred because it was not the force of destiny. Sometimes it is desperation. So we must understand what we're talking about, about the force of destiny. It's not what you just think and come about. No, it's the move of the Spirit of God. It's the move of God. It's the Holy Spirit speaking into you, into your heart about the next thing for your life. It's the work of the Spirit. Sometimes God brings about certain events to bring it to happen. Amen. It's not by desperation, but by the move of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I'll give one other example here. In Genesis chapter 29, Genesis 29, let's look at that story to illustrate this force of destiny. In Genesis 29, we know the story when Jacob went to serve with Laban. And when he had served for his choice, the Bible says, and I read for you, 
I'll take it from verse 15. Let's get this story right. You know, for some of us, if you don't know this story, I'd like you to get it for my illustration. When verse 15 said, Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful of form and first. Verse 18. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your daughter, Rachel. Just mark that. Verse 19. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than to give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. I wanted to follow this story carefully. Now, then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my time is completed. That is, the seven years that I may go into her. Verse 22, Laban gathered all the men of the place and made a feast. Now in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to him. And Jacob went into her. Laban also gave his maid, Sipla, to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came about in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? But Laban said, It is not the practice in our place to marry off the younger before the firstborn. This is a story we need to see what happened here. We can see how the custom of the land changed a trajectory of destiny. It changed the, 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 the setting of what a man has will. But God's plan, God's predetermined plan had to come into place. We saw here, Jacob loved Rachel and labored seven years. But the force of destiny says, no, it is Leah's. She has a purpose destined in the agenda of God. Some will say it's favor, but I have seen destiny at work. Jacob was upset. I don't know about Rachel because Jacob was the one who labored for Rachel and he was given something totally not expected. But because of God's agenda, because of God's plan, there was a predetermination of this event. Custom only came into play. Custom only came in as a reason but it's the predetermination of God. It's a destiny. It's the force of destiny. The process may be wrong, but when the force of destiny is at work, no man can stop it. God always has a way to orchestrate certain things to fulfill his agenda. And I'm saying to someone today, you are in the agenda of God. How you are going to fit in depends in the hand of God, depends on God. But God will bring it into place. God will orchestrate it for you, that you will be where he wants you to be. You will be part of his purpose on this earth, part of his purpose to bring about a change in this world. And so you need to see yourself as a child of destiny. You need to see yourself as a, as a man of purpose, a woman of purpose. And as we begin to see this story, that this was a sort of a swap. This was a sort of a disappointment. But there is, in every disappointment, I always believe there is an appointment. For God works all things to the good, or for the good of them who loved him. And so we saw here 
that we might count this to be a, a, a favor, but it is a destiny. And Jacob was upset. He woke up in the morning. It was Leah on his side. And he said to Laban, why? Why? And I wanted to say something here that, you know, many a times you want to question the situation. You want to question God. You want to question a man. Why have you been treated this way? Why have you been disappointed this way? But in every why, there is an answer. And that answer is God's, that we need to know the mind of God, the mind of God. It might be a predestined thing that God has set in place, but it has to come into manifestation. And so we, we, we can see from this story that you know destiny that God has prepared can become an upset to people, but it's about God's agenda. Hallelujah. And again, looking at this story, there are labors, there are labors in the 21st century. There are labors in the 21st century who gave you what you do not expect. There are labors, you know, he gave Jacob what he didn't expect. And so it is in this world that there are labors that will give you what you do not expect. There are labors. They will deceive you for their own interest. You know, some, some people, would this, they will deceive you for their own interest, but you have to see that, you have to believe that God will work all things for your good. Those are labors. who will give you what you do not expect. Who will give back to you what you do not expect. Some will leave you for someone else. You did not expect that. I've seen people who are left behind. They were, they, they were given what they do not expect. And they left them with in, in, in miserable. Sometimes maybe you are left behind. You are given pregnancy you did not expect. And you have been left miserably. But I want you to understand one thing. Look for God. Look for God. Who works all things for the good of those who love him. For those who are called according to his purpose. You may be upset, but it's the force of destiny. It's the force of destiny. And I'm praying this morning that the Lord will bring you to understanding of what you have gone through in life. The Lord will bring, you know, some peace upon your life to what you have seen in this world. What you have seen in, the, in this life. It's the force of destiny. And what you need to ask God in the circumstances like this is, God, what's next for me? What's next for my life? You need to ask God, and he will surely ordain you. The Bible says he orders the steps of the righteous. He orders the step of the righteous. You know, some circumstances, some event may have to cause a shift in your life. You need to ask God that what's next for my life? For every disappointment, there may be another appointment. This is the word for someone this morning. And I know that God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. So just look at the story of Jacob, of Jacob with Laban. And we see that the one who was loved was burning for years. Rachel was loved, was burning for years. And the unloved woman was having children like a factory. God is mysterious. That is the force of destiny. Because of God's agenda. So the course or path to a destiny is, is, is God's prerogative. It's God's prerogative. But man becomes an instrument in the process. Even if the man didn't wish to do it, by the force of destiny, he will be compelled to do it because God wants it so. Hallelujah. So this story in this Genesis 29 is to teach us. We're talking about the force of destiny, not force of manipulation, not force of desperation, but we're looking at the preordained 
things of God that has to come into effect is what we refer to as the force of destiny. It has to come up. It has to happen because it's part of God's agenda. And you need to see what may have happened in your life that you considered to be an embarrassment in your life. But you need to see the good of God that you have seen in that embarrassment. And you will give God the glory. Hallelujah. I'm preaching about destiny upsets. And I'm saying today, there is the force of destiny. There is the force of destiny in the Kairos moment. When you are pulled into God's predestined purpose for your life, the process may upset people or even upset you. It's the force of destiny when it's time and season. And you cannot even explain it. You cannot even explain it. And so today, do not be held up by regret or in regret. Do not be held up in regrets. Where maybe where you are today or certain situation you have gone through, all shall work out for your good. That's the message. All shall work out for your good in the name of Jesus. Because it's the force of destiny. The predetermined plan of God must have to come in place for you. Because God has a reason for you going through what you have gone through. You need to see God in your situation. You need to see God. You need to pray unto him to show you the next thing. You need to find the will of God in certain disappointment and even some appointment. You need to find the will of God. Therefore, the force of destiny is a time when we are compelled by the Spirit of God to be in line with His agenda, to come into the center of His will. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a force of destiny. When you even look at the, the birth of our Lord in, in Luke chapter 1, chapter 2, we, we saw everything came into pass, into situation. When Mary was highly favored for the agenda of God, the favor of God came upon him. He was enthroned. He was betrothed to Joseph. But when the force of destiny came, the Lord has to come through him, through her, Virgin Mary. He has to come through her. It's the force of destiny as God has set it. So she came into the agenda of the Lord despite what has you know, been set up for her in marriage. Praise God. And I want to say today when we talk about the force of destiny. Maybe you refuse to help a man or a woman. You refuse to help them. You may be causing a delay of the predestination or predestined career, predestined marriage for such individual. You cause a delay also of ministry work preordained by God when you refuse to, 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 to help when you refuse to rise to help what has been preordained. But the good news is this. If you refuse to help to be a, a destiny helper, the Lord will raise someone else to effect his predestined plans for such individual. Let me repeat myself. I'm talking about the force of destiny. If you refuse to help a man or a woman to get into their purpose, either what they've been predestined for, the kind of career they're going to follow, the kind of you know business they had to do, even someone who is predestined to be married, and you 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 refuse, you know, you refuse to come into that moment that God has set for them, God will always raise someone else. God will always raise someone else. Hallelujah. And that's why, you know, Mordecai said to Esther, in Esther chapter 4 verse 14, when there was the, 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 the time that the Jews were, were about to be, you know, to be attacked, you know, to, to, to be messed up in the land by Haman. And he sent a message to Esther. And he said something. He said, if, for if you remain silent at this time, if you remain silent, that means you do not care to help the situation. 
is that if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. And you and your father's house will perish. That's an indication of what we're saying that about these things that, you know, in the force of destiny, if you refuse to stand in a time, you know, that the Lord wants to do his work, if you refuse, if you remain silent where you need to speak in defense, in, in the work of things according to God's plan, God will raise someone else. That's what this force of destiny is. It's the Spirit of God that is at work. And so we saw in that story of Esther that, you know, she called and she went into fasting and, you know, she went before the king and favor was granted. Favor was granted when the force of destiny, you know, these are people of destiny. These are people of destiny. Nothing could cut short their life. Nothing could make them to disappear or be oppressed. They are people of God. And God raised Esther as a destiny helper. And I pray that God will use you. I pray that the Lord will use you in his agenda to preserve his children in this world, to set about his work in this world, to raise men and women to their God-ordained destiny in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I was about to finish this section today. I want us to understand that helpers of destiny are heavenly induced. Heavenly induced. Not by familiarity. Not even by your own achievement. They are heavenly induced. They are heavenly induced. The move of God, that God raised them at a particular point in time. They are destiny helpers. When the force of destiny is in place, you know, when the Lord Jesus, when he began his ministry, we saw the disciples, how he meant it, how they encountered him from the time of Peter and the, 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 the sons of Zebedee. They all fell into place. They are men, they are destiny helpers that God has positioned to bring about his will the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are praying today that the Lord will come in by the force of destiny to bring about his plans for our life, to bring about his plan for your life, that the Lord will raise men, the Lord will raise people, the Lord will even touch authority to bring about you know, his will to manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. Because nothing can withstand what God had predestined. Nothing can withstand it. Nothing can stop it. And with us in Christ Jesus, I want you to believe that he has come to give us life in abundance. Life in abundance. That's what Christ has come to give us. And so we shall all be in that ordained moment of our life. And we need to continue to seek his face that he shall bring about what he has planned for us. The future he has for you. The plans that he has for you. You need to believe God. And I pray to first for someone today who has found himself or herself in circumstances of life. And you, you have been praying. You have been praying. I pray that the force of destiny will come to shift you from that very place that is not glorifying God. The force of destiny will come to shift you from the pit of hell, from the pit of ungodly, from the pit of witchcraft. The force of destiny will raise you and place you in the marvelous light of Lord Jesus Christ, to place you in the center of his will, where you will give God glory and give him all the honor for your life in the name of Jesus. And I pray for those who are believing God for uh, for careers, for careers in business or professional life, and you find yourself, you know, doing wrong things. You know, there is a force of destiny that will move you, that can shift you by the will of God and shift you to where God wants you to thrive, 
where God will want you to thrive, where the blessing of the Lord is, there is a force of destiny to force you, to shift you into where God wants you to prosper in the name of Jesus. And I pray that that desire, that career desire shall come into manifestation. Sometimes you have been believing God to work with a particular organization. And I'm praying today that your destiny in that organization shall open up in the name of Jesus. The industry you wish, you desire to be, your destiny in that industry shall open up in the name of Jesus. There shall be force of destiny. God will raise men and women as destiny helpers for where you want to be, for where he has a plan for you in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord God, we thank you today in the name of Jesus. And as I conclude today about the force of destiny, the force is a compelling time and season, the compelling spirit of God to bring into action the predestined plan of God for your life. We have seen the, 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 the we also say that the, the force of destiny is to bring God's plan into place for what you are preordained for. It's not, it's not by, by, by your perfection or by the, 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 your personality or your achievement, but because of God's agenda that has to be in place. I made example of Leah and Rachel. You know, Leah was, was, was a swap, but God knows about it. And Leah bore sons. Among those sons are the ones, are the tribes of Israel today. Rachel had only two, and so you can see that when God wants to bring his predetermined order into place, nothing can hinder it. And so we have seen that today, that whatever it is, a process to get to where you are today, to be where you are today, if the will of God is the force of destiny, the process may be controversial, but I want you to see God in it. It's not where you want to destroy other people. No, it's the way God has put things into arrangement. And so, I'm just saying this morning, that let us continue to give God glory for where we are and where we wish to be. And the force of destiny shall surely come into place in the name of Jesus. Destiny, predestined, Predetermination, preordain, transcend your effort in life. Destiny transcends your effort in life. Though you will see the blessing and honor, but there is a, a, a time that God wants to bring his things into perfection. And so I pray this morning that what we have heard in this message will surely give us understanding of where we are in life and what God is about to do in your life. In the name of Jesus. And I pray today that the world of today, that everything that we wish for, the predestined plan of God is in Christ Jesus. You need to receive him into your life. You need to worship him. You need to acknowledge and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. For all the kind intention of the will of God, they are all summed up in Christ Jesus. And so it is that you need to believe him today, that he is the Lord and he is the savior of your life, the savior of your future. Believe him today and it shall be well with you. You will be in the center of his will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It's been wonderful today and I pray that the message of today will surely remain with you as you reflect on it, as you gain faith in it, and God will surely bring you into the center of his will. God will make you his vessel. No matter where you are, he will make you his vessel by the force of destiny. And you shall give him the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. This has been Abe Adeniba, the pastor of Shekena Fellowship Ministry. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and grant you your heart desire in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you this morning before I go. Father, mighty God, I pray, mighty God, for the sister, the brother that has listened to this message this morning. I pray, mighty God, that desires in their heart. You are God that 
give that grant the desires of our heart. And so, mighty God, I pray today that somebody who is looking for a shift from where they are, let there be force of destiny to shift them, O oh Lord God, from a place that they are not happy, that they cannot give glory to God. Father, let the force of destiny come to shift them into your center of your will in the name of Jesus. There are people who have been rejected and neglected even by their family. Father, I pray as you shift David even from the bush to shift him into a new ordination, I pray that you shift somebody today to be ordained for where you have planned for him. In the name of Jesus, some shall be ordained for marriages. Some shall be ordained for new jobs, for businesses in the name of Jesus. For the work of ministry, many shall be ordained this in, by the force of destiny. In the name of Jesus, Father, I give you all the glory and honor. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you for families. Thank you, Lord, for individuals that you have called in such a time like this to be part of your agenda on this earth. Let there be force of destiny. Let there be force of destiny in the name of Jesus. Move them from among the unbelievers and move them into the assembly of the righteous in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you and I'll see you during the course of the week. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.